this is um, yeah so the tube zipper is pretty sweet and it also has a really nice uh, overdrive that can be used just for that sorry I had a thought there was an emergency here the small clone which I want to modify but I haven't yet the stereo uh, Mikhail, is this, uh, there, there's the word, Hazari. Didn't we talk about that? This is the stereo memory man with Hazari. And actually, we don't go into there next. We go from this pedal, the small stone, into the flanger hoax, which is the grandmother of all awesome flanger pedals and is a wild beast to try and tame. And that goes to the Memory Boy Deluxe. Deluxe Memory Boy, which is an analog delay. That goes to the Memory Man, which is a digital delay. And then that, that's it for this board, and then we jump to the looper, which has a separate pedal, a uh, set of pedals that can switch the loops to a uh, reverse. <laughs> uh, Timmy, boy, I had to stop the thing. I thought there was an emergency. Oh, now there's no viewers. I wonder if that's accurate. Weird. And then this is... I built this from a kit. This is a Voice of Saturn. You should check them out, Voice of Saturn. Um, has a raw power switch, raw power, and a voluminous switch. And uh, this was an old, if you can see, I don't know if you can see through the paint, this is one of those old switching boxes for printers, you know, <laughs> when you had like one big dot matrix printer, I guess, and you connected it to multiple computers. But these boxes are built stout and can be had at most uh, thrift stores, new in the box. So I actually kept the original switch there, that AB switch, and wired into that, and then put the guts of it, drilled the holes and everything, and then, uh, so, that just makes funny noises. It's but it's like a 555 timer, if you know what that is, like an Atari Punk console, which is a fun electronics project, and, uh, but this is like a double 5, it's like a 555 and a 556, and they intermodulate and get crazy. And then this pedal is a great pedal. This is a hand-painted limited edition or whatever. This is Onoho, O-H-N-O-H-O. -O -O. Pedals out of New York. The dude paints. He does series pedals, so this is the Utter Stutter. I think it's a Series 7, and he'll run. He'll make, you know, 20 or whatever in a series, and then you can get them, and they have unique art. This one has an elephant. You actually go on the website and you can see all the pedals in the series and you can pick the one you want, you know, specifically. So I said I wanted the elephant. There's the Ona Holoniker with the handwritten things. Made in Brooklyn, December. Yeah, it is batch number December, December 2009. It's a feedback loop. So you basically just put, it doesn't do anything by itself. It's, you feed other pedals to it and it sends them back into their own inputs which nine times out of ten results in just utter chaos and um, ear-shredding mayhem. And the one time out of ten, it works really well. It's beautiful. And it also stutters like a tremolo kind of thing. It goes wah, 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 wah. So it, it does that. That's the hand motion for that. FX25B envelope filter not on the board. Run-of-the-mill TS7. Tube Screamer, not on the board. There's a uh, Voodoo Labs Tremolo, not on the board. There's a little analog synth here with a ribbon. Whoa. But it doesn't have batteries. I tried to turn this on yesterday. This is that. It was also a kit that came in a magazine. And I modded this. 
to have a keyboard output or keyboard input. Normally you just control it with this ribbon, but I, it's pretty easy to do. Just added you know, this on the inside so that you can control it with a little uh, resistor ladder keyboard. And there's the base, the base case. Let's look at the base. Why not? As long as the sound is working. There's the base. It's a Schecter Stiletto Studio 5 neck through that I got a couple years ago. And I was looking for a base and I played it in the store and I fell in love with it with the base amp. So, Oh. Hang on then. Sorry. My phone is falling out of my hand. So that's my main base. Here's a tongue drum that I built. Here's a basket of goodies. Pan pipes. This thing, everyone loves this thing. A uh, recorder, claves, Tibetan bowl, this. I did this last time. There's this. Harmonica. Then here's where, oh, there's all these other things around the ground here. Circuit bent stuff. I like to circuit bend. Here's a circuit bent turtle and a circuit bent that, and this thing is bent pretty seriously. Let's see if this has batteries. Probably not. No. Nothing around here has batteries because batteries suck. But circuit bent stuff, you often want to work with batteries because you can fry yourself if you don't. Got one of these out of tune. Got one of these out of tune. Here's a little keyboard that I modified to play that other ribbon synth. And according to Bob, it works. At least it worked on 62007 and played It's a Small World. It's, um, it's a, uh, you get toys like this and you, you go in, you open them up and you, Julia Forsyth is asking what is her Um You go in and you touch, it's basically the, kind of ruining the toy and finding hidden sounds inside of it. So. You connect parts that aren't meant to be connected on the circuit board or on the components. And very often you'll find, I really wish I had one to plug in. There's lots of videos. I have tons of videos on YouTube. Um, but you find noises that it wasn't meant to make. They're usually glitchy kind of things. Let me see if Barbie is. Here's a Barbie guitar. Let's see if Barbie will. See, everything is out of batteries, for heaven's sake. Oh, that's out of batteries in, in the worst way, right? Here we go. Um, let me see if I can get this to glitch. Once you find a... Once you find the, the band, you wire wires to it and switches so that you can replicate it. Um, so there's a band I found that just made it make some made this machine make a horrible noise like that. So the bend I found here just causes it to repeat the note. And that bend uh, changes the rate of the So once you find a good bend, you just um, you wire it up and then put a switch or a pot or no, I'm serious, Dragon. So the the beauty of this is a it's a naive art. That is, you don't have to know anything at all about electronics. You have to develop certain hand skills like soldering, which is not that hard to do. Um, 
but it's a great ex exploratory art. You just open up the, you buy a thing for a buck at the Goodwill, and you open it up and just connect. You just get a paper clip, or you can lick your fingers and try and connect different things. Here's what it's supposed to do, you see? And there's what it does once you bend it up. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm mesmerized now. This is, I love sound, and so I'm very into sound. But you get sounds that cannot otherwise be replicated, right? This is the only thing in the world that does that. Now, if you got this same exact thing and bent it in the exact same way, you could probably get that. But um, for sampling and stuff, you can get uh, you can get sounds that you just can't get. They're wholly unique, right? And isn't that what we all want when we make sounds? Just that for them to be wholly unique. So you got to start circuit bending. Start today. All you need is a soldering iron, really, and some wire. And uh, just go to the Goodwill or something, get something, put some batteries in it. Always, always bend with batteries. Sometimes I've wired a, a adapter into something if I really like the way it's bent, but you don't want to hurt yourself. Whoops. Here, let me see. Now that we're on the subject, let me just see something here. Because I really like the way this particular thing is bent, and if I can get it to work. Yeah. All right, so this one. So, so yeah, this is a little. We'll do a little tutorial on circuit bending. So, when once you bend it and you find your bends, you you basically got to get a Dremel or a drill and you wire in your switches. So on this one, I have this potentiometer right here, which adjusted the rate. This is a reset, so this breaks the basically the wires that go to the battery. You some some things when you bend them, you'll crash the circuit so hard that it doesn't work anymore uh, temporarily. So. This has a reset. This one was prone to doing that. I guess if you starve the circuit enough, it just shuts down. So this is a quick reset that just is a, a momentary switch in between the battery wire. And I don't know what this did. And it did something, and then this did something. And a lot of them I wire with the with a quarter inch jack, so I can plug it into this nonsense and get some crazy, crazy sounds. So those are you, so you can do potentiometers and switches and momentary switches, or you can do um, this is these are called contact points. These are basically just bolts, nuts and bolts with acorn nuts on top of bolts, and underneath inside the business here there's wires that are connected to various parts, and so you can actually ch uh, use your skin to. resistance of your skin, uh, because you, as you know, electricity, if you've ever licked a battery, will travel across your, your meat space, your meat, and so, um, and if you, if you lick your fingers, the effect is different. So, it's unpredictable. Circuit bending is terribly unpredictable, and sometimes you can't replicate a bend, and sometimes you can, but it's just really fun. It's a fun way to kind of... Um, Co-op the tools of empire, right? Or the the mountains of plastic <laughs> produced uh, and sent to the U.S. and discarded. You'll find quickly that when you get to the goodwill, that people run out of patience for these electronic toys and discard them in droves. And so, for a buck or fifty cents, you can get a completely unique instrument that is unique to you that you bent and made yourself. This one has a quarter-inch jack too. So, ooh, you know what? I think, hang on. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if. Sorry for the, uh, there's no steady cam here. Let's see if I can, this will probably be so loud, but let me try and. <laughs> let me turn it down a sec. <laughs> uh. So that's M, right? <coughs> what's uh, what's on here? It's going through the memory book. Turn it off. And we'll turn this off. Turn it 
turn this off. Let's start clean here. So <coughs> it's still hella loud. One sec. One sec. This amp so, or sort of only has one speed. <coughs> This is all live, baby. Live radio. Mm -hmm. Or TV. There we go. We're kind of getting it. Beach. Well, we'll just have to live with how loud that is. Yes. Is it totally, uh, is it totally, um, clipping? Bye. Oh, yeah. T. <laughs> So, uh, I wonder if I could set this down so I can play this with, well, no, I'll just do it like this. I do it like I did before. Oh, crash it. Crashed it. Oh, knocked the batteries out. <laughs> that sounds evil, huh? So then you can do that, but then you can also, you know, <coughs> plug it through your effects. God, I wish it wasn't so loud. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here's what I'll do. Go into another amp that's not so friggin' loud. There we go. That's more like it. Now we can. I can be in the same room. So I just went into my cheap little Fender frontman here. So then you can go. Here's through the uh, sub decay noise box. Yeah, see? So that, um, so, so, where's it getting at? It's picking up somehow. I wonder if it's playing back to the speaker. That's really trippy. Hello. Wow. I just found out something new about this. You can talk into the speaker. Wow. See? This is why circuit bending is awesome, because you can figure things out that you never knew existed. I just found something totally new, and I love it. So, oops, what's going on here? Oh. That's the, that's the tube zipper. I love it that it's picking up the audio from the, the speaker. That's trippy. So uh, so then you can just turn on all these pedals, right? And this pedal, you can loop this. So if I can get it to make noise again. So I captured that loop, right? See? I'm not doing anything. Capture that loop, and then you can... Hard to do with one hand, but... Oh, that's pretty. This is the flanger hoax. 
which self oscillates. Yeah, it gets out of control quickly. It's hard to do with one hand because I have a I have a volume pedal that that works in a pinch when everything goes crazy. So so then I can take all that business and loop it over here. And then this pedal you can reverse on the fly. Select a different bank and record that. I can reverse that on the fly. And thereby build up tracks. And what I like to do, and then how are we going to turn all this nonsense off? I'll turn this off, and this, and that. And so we still have this looping. Hazari, do that bad boys. So if I turn that off, then just this pedal is working those loops. And then I like to do this. I like to radically slow down the tempo so you start hearing the samples. Anyway. So I, I play in a noise, I play in a couple bands, some of them much more conventional, but I also play in an experimental ambient noise act called 14 Foot Clearance. And so we do all this, but then also with guitars and stuff. So, so anyway, I'm going to stop that. How do I stop that? So that's the pedal boards, and that's what they do. And this is, so there's circuit and stuff all over here because it's such a great and inexpensive hobby. The most expensive thing, of course, is the pots and switches, but you can buy those in bulk um, from some Asian suppliers. You can get a whole bag of like 100 of these mini toggle switches for, you know, 20 bucks or something. And uh, so there's circuit bent stuff all over the place. And there's some there, and there's some here, and there's this thing, which has all kinds of switches wired up to it. And that's that. That's how that noise is made. <laughs> it's so cool. I can, as I'm broadcasting, I can see the chat like on my broadcast screen, which is tripping me out. So that's the main room. And then behind this slanted glass wall or this thing is the drum room. And the drum set is in, like everything else, in total disarray because I played out with somebody and I never set it up again. But there's a lot of symbols here. Here's an FE12 string that needs some repair. It doesn't belong to me. There's a little mandolin. There's the Puerto Rican quattro with a broken bridge. Fantastic instrument when it worked. Uh, the bridge just flew off one day. So there's my Ibanez Arcor thin line. It's like an Epi dot or a really good quality build for an inexpensive guitar with the humbuckers. Ibanez, that's my four string. I never play four string anymore. I only play five string, but that was my original, one of my original bases. An Aria Pro 2 fretless neck through. There's a bass. What a fantastic bass. Um, I got that at a pawn shop. And it's a prototype. It's a factory prototype, so it's not even a uh, like a production run model. It has some slight differences, but 
sounds like a piano. It's got a, it just it's heavy as hell, and it's a big. Um, I got the flat wounds on there, and it's a great bass. The guy from Duran Duran played that bass, and Jack Bruce played it, and some other people. And then a couple of my acoustics, my original Alvaro's acoustic, and that's a Takamini or whatever however you say that Takamini. Yeah, I guess that would be it. And the drum set. And then in this room, dun, 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 through that little window, this is a design. It's being used as storage now. Do they have Maker Faire Canada? Because if not, you ought to organize one. It's awesome. Or you should come down for this one in San Mateo. Um, this is a vocal booth, so it's designed for that. I got cowbells galore. I love cowbells. Here's a three three tree cowbell and another cowbell and on my drum set I have the big ridge rider which is a huge cowbell. But anyway, all these uh this was a garage and I converted it to this. And it's not real pro but I did do things like this, make double walls. So there's an outside wall, but this is into the main room here. There's one wall and a gap and then another wall. Especially for the drum room here. So I can just play drums until whenever, which is awesome. Playing drums in the middle of the night is uh, a very freeing and liberating experience. Nice. you got to go to the Maker Faire. It's really uh, a great experience. So anyway, that's kind of, this is where I make sounds and music. And I have a gig tomorrow night with 14 Foot Clearance at a cafe downtown in Sac. So I have to get all this stuff packed up. I built all these boards and they all go into these uh see those? Old Samsonite luggage. They all fit into these custom foam Samsonite luggage carriers. So that's how I get them to the gig. Inexpensive and DIY. That's how we roll here. Some other stuff. There's a pedal I don't have a power for. It doesn't belong to me. There's clarinets. I'm a clarinet player, so there's a clarinet in pieces and a M Audio key rig, cheap MIDI keyboard, and a little mixer. Darth Vader on the wall. A friend of mine, <coughs> one of my fellow faculty members, went to India. She's from India, and she brought me back these sweet hanging bells that I have everywhere. Oh, someone asked about Dora the Explorer. She does not anything. She came, she was stuck to a toy that I was bending uh, that cost a buck ninety nine. She doesn't do anything. But she has a boyfriend, this guy. You'll like this. Have you ever seen this dragon? Let's see if I can get him to work. Cybertronic. He's a little candy raver with his, check it, check out his, uh, he's got a glow stick, he's rocking it. So depending on how you jar his neck, he does different things. There, he does one, let's see, the B controls your mind is my favorite. I don't know where it is though, hang on. There you go. The beat controls your mind. Isn't that the truth? So he and Dora are, have been going out. They're serious. And there's Broby from, uh, I don't know what show that is. I can never remember the name, with DJ Lance Rock. Oh, I'll totally broadcast the gig. Um, yeah, I always worry. See, I, you know, I don't know. You've probably heard me. I always worry about bogarting the stream and stepping on people's toes and stuff. So I get nervous when I go to, you know, broadcast for 30 minutes or whatever. But I'll, I'll do it. Or I'll try. So anyway, that's the studio. And this is mostly just a test. <laughs> 
The beat does control your mind. That thing, boy, if you want to do some damage, you plug that. That's got a uh, uh, stereo mini out. I can plug that. Dig it, see? I can plug that into my business right here and cause a whole lot of havoc. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, 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 because there's musicians out there. This is cool. A charango from Peru. Would check out, Grant, check out the uh, metal headstock. Uh, so my friend was going to Peru, and I said, hey, I need a charango. Hook me up. And she went and found some, there was a band playing or whatever, and they said, oh, yeah, go see this guy. And she went and had to find this guy. He lived in, you know, this old hut inside the old Inca wall or whatever, and he was building one. And he said, oh, it won't be done for a week. And that was uh, timed correctly for when she was leaving. So on her way out of Peru, she stopped by and picked it up for me, and it was freshly lacquered and put it on the plane. It suffered a little bit of crazing and stuff from the, I presume, from the altitude changes and stuff on the back, but... But it's a cool little it's out of tune and whatever. But it's a cool instrument. So there's another guitar in here that somewhere that I would show you if I knew where it was. But anyway, signing out. Which looks like a monkey? This? They used to make that. You've probably seen these. They would make them out of armadillos. This one is wood. I don't think it's legal to make them out of armadillos anymore. But the back, the the whole sound bowl used to be a, an armadillo with his little head up here where my thumb is. Uh, or they're made that way from time to time. So I do not have the armadillo. I have the cruelty-free model. Let me turn off the lights here. All right. Uh, oh, and then there's this. This is a nice rattle. It has these pods on the bottom. It's like a nice dance rattle. I think it's a South American rattle. And it has a shaker things in the top. So, yeah. All right. Chaotic studio tour. Uh, yeah, look up Chirango, and you can see them. They look kind of sad. The little armadillos are kind of curved up as the, the outer shell. Brutal. All right, uh, I'm going to shut things down, I guess, and go get something to eat. Thanks for hanging out. No steady cam here. Seasick. Seasick all the way. Bye.